Hey, guess what I found? The get jiggy code. It's kind of pointless, really. I, I mean, it's it's helpful if you don't have a strategy guide, but if you don't, you probably wouldn't find it anyway. Um, you just gotta keep on checking the tent until she eventually gives you the code. What it does is it activates the signposts in Jiggy Wiggy's temple. And, like, they tell you where to find all the Jiggies in the game using brief descriptions. Whatever. Um, there, they took away my burgers because you can't take them out of the park for some reason. No biggie. I'm gonna open up the next section of the overworld because now I have the access to the split-up pads. Gotta love that double jump. Oh, and by the way, those sparkly things on the pads uh, don't only appear on pads. Those are swap clouds, and the game seems to think that they're important. You just can find them somewhere. They're usually on switches, and you use them to switch characters. Anyway, this is the cliff top, which you saw briefly um, during like a camera pan to open up the next level. Uh, there's a train station here, which isn't going to do anything for you yet. It's all part of just an annoying side mission. It's actually one that I already mentioned. And here we can learn a uh, cool item. The ice eggs. Reason called, but that's the price for lunch egg eggs of solid ice. These are like always really short songs for the eggs. There's an enemy all the way down there for reasons I do not know. Anyway, um, well, let's just try and phrase it. Just because. Yay! Now let's try and blow it up. Hooray! That was fun. But enough of that. Last time I think I said, or not last time, but like previously I think I said that there was no way I was going to finish Witchy World in one week, but I did. This one, once again I'm saying, there's no way I'm going to finish this level in one week. So I might as well just kill myself. Arr, or not. Because there's a switch down here, which I completely missed. I thought I was going to land like near it. But I forgot where it was. That leads to uh, another level. That's um, that's the seventh one. I'm gonna go buy it because like there's stuff over there, but I can't get in it yet. Must speed up everything. Uh, the door gives a pretty good indication of what kind of level this is gonna be. If you haven't played this game already, I'm not gonna entirely spoil it for you. But ice and fire mixed. And here's a globo because Mumbo's over there. This might be the farthest a globo has been from mumbo so far and look at that it's got to be like what a couple hundred feet maybe that's so far away and uh there is something up there which the game does not want me to see but it's a jinjo uh can't get that yet whatever let's go to ye laguna Jolly Roger's Lagoon. Not to be confused with Jolly Roger Bay. Must always mention that either anytime either of the levels are mentioned. Anyway, in this place we can find doubloons, which, as that as Jam Jars is saying, it's the only currency accepted. You use them to buy some stuffs. So you gotta drill open all these holes in the ground and they're just scattered around the level basically. Um, so let me go ahead and gather some of them. I know where most of them are, at least. Uh, down there, that would be where most of the level takes place. We'll be doing some of that starting tomorrow, because today there's not going to be enough time to. Today is just going to be exploring the town. Uh, here we got some pigs. Yeah, it, d it doesn't look fine at all. Yeah, Banjo there says uh, this one may take some time. No kidding. You're not going to be a, uh, achieving anything here until the very end of the game. This very well might be the last Jiggy that you get. 
Anyway, yeah, this pool's disgusting, and it's apparently cold, too. Making it less disgusting isn't hard, but warming it up, on the other hand, is. These swimming controls are going to be kind of a pain, because the keyboard doesn't like to let me hold that many keys at once. This pig's got three arms. Because, yeah, it's got toxic waste pouring into it. Not the best place to go swimming. Anyway, let's see what kind of crud we can find in the level. Here's... Uh, Blubber's Wave Race higher. It's heading here. Not a whole lot in here, but whatever. Totally not a reference to Wave Race 64. Which I've never played, by the way. And it allegedly has Totaka's song somewhere in it, but I... I... like... No, no, it's people think that it might, but nobody's found it yet. Anyway, this is Captain Blubber from the first game. Uh, he burps a lot. He's a hippo, and I don't like hippos, so let's just get him out of the way. Anyway, his wave racer got eaten by a fish, and you give him a doubloon, and he gives you running shoes, which you will use for a total of one thing, which you don't even have to use them for, because you can get them by using Bad Joe's double jump thing, so whatever. Ginger up there, and let's go ahead and use the running shoes, since after all, we did pay for them. If it ever loads. And there's also that other thing you can use them for that I made a video of. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll be doing that in this playthrough. I haven't thought about it. Probably not. I don't know. I, I don't see any reason not to, but whatever. Um, just more town stuff, really. Uh, this... I don't think I can get anywhere with this. Yeah, you gotta be Kazooie only to get up there. So... How many of these do we have? I need four more. Anyway, let's... Oh, there's a warp pad I didn't activate yet. Let's blow up this dingus. Because Kazooie's got some stuff she can do, so... Let's switch over. Do this, and there's also a move you can learn, which I haven't even gone near yet. Because I'm going to be completely honest here, this isn't my first time recording this segment. Uh, the first time, it just didn't save. I think it was because I had the quality set to 100 instead of 85, like I usually do. Because of, like, I don't really know why. Hopefully it'll work this time. If you're seeing it, obviously it did. Anyway, this is Kazooie's first attack. And actually only attack, and hooray. I love when he does that. It just randomly happens sometimes. Oh, and this is Turtle View Cave. Uh, let's view the turtles. Okay, let's try viewing the turtles again. Okay, let's try viewing the turtles again. There we go. Okay, there's only one turtle, and his eyes are freaking out. I don't know why. Anyway, uh, that's a sort of a like, come back for later quest, because I don't have the proper move yet. I might pay him a visit, um, if I th feel like it, I don't know. Anyway, now let's just head into Pono's Emporium. Not to be confused with a Porno Emporium. I'm not sure what an Emporium really is, except for the, uh, crudely painted, not so funny plywood cutout fuck art warehouse Emporium, th whatever. Um, yeah, there's Globo over there once again. It's slightly far away from Mumbo, but not noticeably so. And we got a bunch of random Banjo-Kazooie memorabilia in here. There's just a box of assorted junk, photo of Brentilda, who's not in this game, large Grunty plush toy, which was one of the prizes for Grunty's Furnace Fun. And this guy has the best voice in the game. You gotta love that voice. He, he is the like the whiniest character ever. Anyway, pay him twenty for the jiggy. Not too hard to come across that many. Let's just chuck it at his face. 
And I love this scene here. It's so pointless, but so awesome. Uh, it hit me in the stomach. And you'll get to see it a second time, too. Obviously, the creators liked it, too. Anyway, uh, you can come back in there again for a Cheeto page if you have enough money for that. I think I'm a little bit short. Let's just head in for uh, check out Mumbo's place real quick. While we're at it, blow up Mumbo's place real quick. That leads to uh, where Tip Top the turtle was. And since I'm almost out of time, I'll just sort of stop up here. Because next time, Mumbo's got a short yet important job to do. So see you next time for that.